Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. So, yeah, I mean, would I go back? I mean, I've been back in time, obviously, to talk to myself, but would I change it? I don't think I would. No. Uh, you're giving so much You're giving so much to the world, but K KC Elite Martial Arts, for those who don't know martial arts, but for those who are watching who are into martial arts, I'm going to give you another reason to uh, be proud of yourself right now. Talk to us about the level of where KC Elite Martial Arts is on the world level. Well... Our club now has the ability to be able to uh, travel to Japan and compete with the world's very, very best at, at the highest level uh, that, that there is. Um, we have been able to earn our way into the respect and the love of some of the greatest masters on the planet. Uh, we have uh, an open door. Whereas most other clubs, the, the way it, North things normally work here in Australia, you go to your local your club events and you, and you do what you can there. You go to your local events, you go to your state events, and you go to your national events. And if you can qualify, if you're good enough to be uh, somebody who qualifies at all those events, hopefully your instructor has enough respect that uh, the Masters in Japan will accept that student to be able to come and that's very, very rare. So it can be very, very good here, and that's as far as it goes. Whereas the, the fortunate position that we are in with the teacher that I have, Tancho Sifu McGuinness, uh, is that I can pretty much point my finger at any student who I think has got potential, take them straight just to Japan, and not only impress, but win. Now, to put that into perspective, there's a, a, there's a tournament held every year in Okinawa called the Okinawa Open. And we fight in full contact karate. So it's bare knuckle, knock down karate. Uh, obviously with kids, they wear little cotton gloves to give themselves some protection, but they all fight hard. Um, our first year was 2014 at the Okinawa Open. I had four competitors uh, that we selected to go over to this event. Um, it was the first international event that we ever took part in. And it was our first time meeting the top brass in Japan. Um, this tournament has been running for 50 years and a Westerner has never gotten through round one. So in a tournament bracket, you can have 16 kids in, in, in that event. Round one, the first eight go through. Round two, the next four go through. Round three is the final. Mm -hmm. um, we had four entries into that. All four of our kids got through round one, which was the first four Westerners in history to be able to do that. Wow. Then uh, three of them went through to round two. Then two of them went on to then win the division. Since then, every year we have come home with no less than two winners every single year since. Uh, just this last recent year, we had a very small team. I think we ended up having uh, three competitors and two of them came back as winners. Um, so extremely proud, proud, proud of that, uh, which then, of course, leads on to the World Cup events, which I've fought in a World Cup, I fought in a World Championship. World Cup, I didn't do so well. I got pretty much knocked out in the first round. Uh, you were in the World Cup, though. It's okay. Yeah, it was only the World Cup. It's only against the very, very best. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and we've had uh, we've had two third places at the World Cup. Uh, we've got our major event, the World Cup. We've got one fighter that's re ready this year. Hmm. We've had at the World Championships, which are held here, only held every four years. Uh, I fought in that event in 2016 and won my first round, which put me in the top eight because only 16 competitors are selected from around the world. 
mm-hmm. uh, for each division, the, the lightweight division, the, the lightweight division and the open di- division. Uh, I was in the open division, got, got through the first, uh, first round, which I was extremely proud of. I faced the uh, reigning champion at that time for round two, and I'm proud to say that I stayed conscious. <laughs> No other Australian who's ever fought this guy has even gotten out of that thing with, with, with their eyes open. So I got through that. I didn't win it, of course, but um, I was happy to say that I stayed conscious and I made a promise to my wife that I would. Uh, and I've had two students compete in that event now three times. So um, we're doing extremely well. And, and a massive shout out to, to all of my staff and the instructors at my school and the students who have fought extremely hard over the years. Yeah. Um, and a massive shout out to, to all the top brass over in Japan, Soshi Shugiha, uh, Country Mizuguchi, uh, uh, Shian Ichikawa, uh, and of course my teacher, Kancho Tsu from McGuinness, um, who have opened those doors for all of our students. students. And um, we look forward to a really, really bright, prosperous future uh, for the club, for the competitors. Um, yeah. Couldn't ask for more. Yeah, no. And, and while we're on here, um, I don't know if I'm going away from the subject, but I'm just going to hold another picture for those who are, are listening on Apple and Spotify. But um, I'm holding a picture up of a competition. Could you just briefly talk to us a little bit about that? I don't know if I'm going away from the World Championship area or something a little bit lower. Oh, that, yeah, that one was a camp that we hosted. Oh, yes, um, camp, of course, yeah. In Australia, so I hosted that camp. Uh, the significance of that was that it was the first time that the that those Japanese masters had ever been to Australia. Oh wow, cool! So they had never been to Australia before, but they came there uh, for me, which I was extremely proud, proud of. And um, we look forward to hopefully having them back again. Yeah, nice. It's one of those things that uh, it, it could have been a one-off. They had a great time. We had a grading at that camp as well where two of my students fought uh, for 40 rounds each to earn their black belts in front of those guys. Um, so to say, that our, to say that our students fight in world championships is one thing, mm-hmm. but to say that our students have then awarded their black belts in front of these great masters and, and had their approval mm-hmm. um, is by far one, one of the greatest rare conditions as a teacher and as a mentor myself, uh, that I could possibly ask for. So I suppose I've got to hurry up and set some more goals because <laughs> I need to start achieving some more things. And we'll finish. We'll finish off that at the end. Uh, what, the future of that, those goals. Um, I'm, 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 I've, I've, I could have picked a lot of pictures from your social media, but I picked this one because I think this picks a really good picture of. I keep saying picture. Your community. Um, yeah. that you've yeah. formed with the, the smiles and the different rare, various ages, you there at the front. Uh, I think it's a great picture uh, and it just really shows, I think it symbolizes the, the beauty behind your identity now and your purpose, doesn't it? It does. It does. After all of that, this is what it's all about. It, Absolutely. It, it's about community, it's about family, uh, it's about uh, giving back and it's about taking what you know you've actually been, and being grateful mm. for every single thing. Uh, a bit of fun there with Matt. <laughs> is, so you were on a – was this a – because it says episode 11, season two. Is that a podcast? Is that a show? What what does that represent? Uh, I think it was. It was one of the promos that we used during COVID. Uh, we, we ran some um, episodes that were called Inside the Ring. Mm. Uh, to help to keep everybody engaged, getting through COVID was, of course, a very, very difficult time. Yeah. Um, of course, and but it also coincided with, with when I went through all of the, uh, you know, the hip replacements and the spinal surgeries. That all happened during that COVID period, so it was kind of good because I was able to hide away from everybody while while all that was going on. But getting on through the tail end of it now, I've had to. Um, I'm still in the process now, of sort of physically getting back, but um, yeah, it's 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 certainly nothing that I can't achieve. You know, I've always had a saying that if it is to be, it's up to me. Yeah, and uh, I choose success, so it's it, it's a no brainer. I, I I will be back. 
Well, we're on that subject then. Um, uh, it's, it's like a graph. We're going up and down. And there's always a, uh, I know we're in the, the pro, the more lighter stage of the episode and the lighter conversation and the, and the beauty that you're offered to the world. But you still go through some hard times in terms of your physical body, don't you? Because even six up to like six, I remember we were talking about, was about even six years ago, you were pr- trying to bring yourself off a lot of um, things that you had to take to, to cover yeah. all the pain and things. Could you briefly yeah. talk to us a little bit about the ups and downs in terms of your body? Because you still have it quite hard, don't you? Yes, yes. So I've got, um, because of the condition that I have, it's risky for me to um, to do a lot of things. So I can't, I can't do weights the way you used to do weights because at the moment if I do slip or something goes wrong, I could cause another nerve impingement mm. or another spinal cord impingement. So I want to avoid that. Yeah. But I think the the time for me of being the physical beast, I suppose, I've been there, I've done that, I've achieved it. I I, I just need balance now, so I just need, and I've been through a period of of where I've had to try to rid myself of all the toxins. Um, I may I, I through all that process too. I, I I had no choice but to let things go. I suppose, um, put on way too much weight, uh, which I'm in the process of. Getting, getting through all that now, hmm. uh, but getting through that was tough. It was really, really, really tough. And it's kind of funny when you've been put through circumstances that are beyond your control. It's easy to not so much easy, but it's it's one thing to be able to process all of that. But when you've been through a situation where you have a chemical uh, uh, in your body that dictates uh, what you eat, how you feel. And what level, level of pain that you have to endure, mm. it kind of change, changes things. And uh, getting through all of that has been, as I won't say the toughest thing I've had to be through, gone, yeah. gone through in my life, but um, it's certainly been a challenge. And when you put things into, into perspective, um, it's, it's nothing that I can't overcome. It's just a different um, challenge, isn't it? But again, everything it, you've been through, you've got that men, uh, mental capacity to be able to, you know, get through it. And that's one of the lessons I'm taking from today. And, and I know everybody yeah, else will, yeah. you know. It's funny, my, my wife's got this saying that she says to me, when, whenever I complain about not being able to you know, get off medications as fast as I want to, they do cause a situation where, you know, if you stop them cold, it it it, it, it does have... A devastating effect. Yeah. So I've sort of been have been trapped in this transition period, which thankfully I'm through now. But like she was saying to me, was that was Matt? You forget who you are. Just remember, you're Matthew fucking Charles. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can get through it, and there's mm-hmm. nothing that you can't do. Um. I remember as soon as she says that, it sort of snaps my mind back in, like, oh yeah, that's right. I momentarily forgot. Um, not that I'm trying to say that I'm anything better than anybody else, but um, I do have an ability to be able to make snap decisions, well, snap changes and follow it through. And that's discipline. That's the difference between discipline and motivation. And I say this to my students a lot, is that motivation is a, something that comes and goes, whereas discipline needs to be something that stays with you. And discipline should be, Discipline is what helps you to make all those small decisions every day. Should I eat this? Should I take this? Should I do this? That's what the discipline is. Is this going to get me to my end goal? Mm. If I do this, am I going to become what it is? That it does, does it fit mm. in with the plan to success? Yeah. Uh, or is it going to deviate my plan to success? Whereas motivation is one of those things that is this going to help me to make a decision that's going to get me to my goal? And quite a lot of times I see with people, they say, I need more motivation. Um, but it's not motivation they need, it's discipline. And yeah. it's the discipline for those tiny decisions. Motivation is a, sometimes a big choice. Discipline are little tiny choices. Mm. And they're little tiny choices that you have to make a thousand times a day. Whereas motivation is sometimes all you need is uh, to play one song to give you motivation to get you to the gym or to get you to the dojo. Yeah. So quite often uh, people look at things the wrong way and it's not motivation that they need, it's discipline. And discipline is probably the easiest thing to um, 
to turn on because you, you make that little choice, then another one, then another one, then another one, then another one. And then you might make the wrong choice, but you've got to bring yourself back and just make another little choice, little choice, little choice. Yeah. And that's the difference. Absolutely. Uh, so if there's anything that anyone can take out of that is discipline is what will get you through some of the darkest moments of your life and motivation will get you to some of the happiest places in your life. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's layers to all of those because I, I was I've read the book uh, by Jim Quick, Limitless about the limitless mindset, and what he he talks about three M's, but one of the M's is motivation, and, and he has a bit of an equation, and he talks about uh, P times E times S three, and P is understanding your purpose for motivation, and I think everything you've just said there kind of falls within layers of all of these points, but P is your purpose, understanding your meaning, your purpose. Um, E is energy to find the energy, and obviously that that could come from your food, that could come from uh, whatever your mentality may be, and and how you set yourself up on that daily basis. But then, the, I think the discipline, what you're talking about, to obtain the the discipline would be the the S three, which is small, simple steps, yeah. uh, and those three yeah. he categorizes as motivation, and uh, and yeah. I think you've nailed it on the head there, yeah. and that's how yeah. I kind of yeah. it through as well. Discipline is a daily thing. Mm. Motivation doesn't need to be a daily thing. In fact, I remember one day at work, I was saying to myself, I'm tired. I'm not going to go to the do dojo tonight. I'm just going to take, take, take tonight off. And driving home from work, yeah, I'm going to relax. Excellent. Be able to eat a meal that's not in a Tupperware container or that has to be heated he 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 up because that's been my life. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so I'm on my way home get home, have a shower, and then I'm driving to the dojo and I thought to myself, oh, that's right, I was supposed to have the night off. I forgot. So that, because discipline and habit had been so ingrained that yeah. I'd totally forgotten that I was going to take the night off. I didn't even need the motivation, but it was discipline that gave me the structure mm. to be able to put all these little things in a place where discipline creates habit, which creates motion, which then creates goals. Yeah. And I didn't even need the motivation, whereas some days you'd need a bit of motivation to get you along. Um, but again, it falls back to those tiny little decisions that you make. And mm. I was making those little decisions without even realising it. I'd ironed my gi, I'd had my pre-fight food, I'd had everything, I'd jumped into the car, I'd filled it up, and I was driving before I even realised that I was going to have the night off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. That's I've never looked at it like that before. You're right. That would be totally the discipline side of things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to show this picture as well, Matt. I think this is a beautiful picture. I think this articulates pretty well the community that you've built uh, along the way. I'm trying to get rid of the reflection there, but everyone's lined up. Um, everyone's high fiving you. You look at your happiest. Um, what's happening here? <laughs> That was uh, not too long ago. Actually, it was about two years ago uh, in Thailand. Uh, this was just before the World Championship, Championship mm -hmm. uh, which is held every four years. And in the lead up to this particular event, uh, we've got all the representatives from all the major branches from all around the world. So we've got every continent re represented, and we all come together. And rather than um, a lot of martial arts systems will have their way of fighting and they'll keep it to themselves and try and hoard it and they don't want to share their secrets. Whereas our organisation believes that um, it doesn't matter what club you come from, it doesn't matter what system you come from, if you know something, you've got to share it. Mm -hmm. So we come to you, always come together and we all share. This is, I've got my fighter who's fighting. This is the training camp that, that we've done. These are the techniques that, that we're using and this is what we're going to do to win. And then the other master will come in from Japan and say, well, this is what our fighters are doing. This is what we, we, we developed. I'd like to show you. And then we get Brazil. Uh, we had this year, we had Kancho Adamita Costa, who was, one, who was one of the greats in martial arts. Uh, he came and spent two days showing us, this is how to beat us. Mm. This, is how, this is what you need to do to beat my guys. And we all share this knowledge. And at the end of the day, whoever's fighter wins, then we all pat each other on the back and say, well, that was fantastic. Next time, yeah, I know what I need to do and, and I know what, what I need to bring and I know the, the type of training that you guys are doing. So we share it all and everybody grows and everybody gets better. 
but then the league starts to grow and grow and grow and all of a sudden uh, trying to compete on that level becomes even exponentially more difficult, but therein lies the challenge. Yeah, of course. And that's what makes it great. That's what makes it brilliant. And that's why, you know, we compete at torn tournaments here and we win everything yeah. and people just stand there scratching their heads. And I say, well, I'll show you what it is that we do. And I say, no, we don't want to know. This is the way that we do things. And yeah, well, okay, if that's the way you do things, that's fine. But sharing really is caring. Yeah, it is. Um, and it keeps it growing, doesn't it? It does. It, it does. And, and you've got to keep that level growing. And it's mm. something else that I've learned in martial arts and in business and in life, mm. uh, that if you're not growing, you're dying. That's right. And you've got to keep evolving and you have to adapt and you have to change. Because if you don't adapt and change, the world's going to adapt and change around you. And, and if swallow you, don't, you up. <laughs> it, yes, it does. Um, so you can either be afraid of that process or you can embrace it. Yeah. Uh, I choose to embrace it because uh, with growth uh, comes knowledge, with knowledge comes growth, and that just keeps on per perpetuating. Yeah. And then your students become far better than you ever did. And like I said earlier on in the episode, is that the dream, well, really the dream should be a very instructor is for their students to eventually uh, uh, supersede them and to, and to grow. And I can proudly say that I've got students in my dojo now that fight far better than I ever did, uh, and I'm so proud, proud, proud of that. Because I know a lot of instructors won't let their students grow because they don't want their students to beat them, so they stop fighting them and they stop growing well that's a sign of a good leader that's where you're coming back into my paradigm my passion is you know inspiring leaders to create other leaders and that means listening to other people's ideas that means listening and taking yep. their strengths on and and uh, and if it's a strength that they have and a weakness that you have use it use a piece of them and if you i, I i'm in education so i mean i'm coming out of education but if i was a principal i want to make what would be powerful for me would be going making other principles because then i'm not just affecting the, the small community that i'm in i'm also helping and supporting and inspiring other communities around whether it would be melbourne whether it would be manchester or wherever it would be i am in the world it would be to create other leaders. And by the time I would retire, I can imagine myself thinking, well, I've created 40 principles, or should I say, yeah. hel I've helped create 40 principles. I've yeah. Yeah. created 70 assistant principles, 110 learning specialists. You know, I'd, 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 I would hope and think I would have that mentality if I was in that position. And I think that's that you've just articulated it in your world. That's exactly what you're doing, right? You're creating, mm -hmm. um, fighters to become leaders and to, to beat you even um and i love that that's the beauty in it all and and embracing mm. it yeah that's what makes you an awesome um are you are you classed as a dojo or what is your official name yeah. so uh i our club we've got the academy yeah right, which encompasses all the different martial arts that we teach yeah uh my karate space my mat area is called the dojo um, in Brazil, they call that for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they call it the Academy. Um, in, in kick, kickboxing and Muay Thai, it's, it's the mat. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the dojo. So I am the dojo boss. So I'm the dojo cho. Uh, and here in Australia, I'm, I'm the regional boss as well. So it makes me the shibu cho. And that makes my teacher the kan cho, who is the, who is the boss of the, entire network, the entire Kai, Kai Khan. Right. Um, so that's kind of how that's classified. But I'm, and I'm further to what you were saying about that is um, we've spoken a lot about the success of the fighters at the club. But the reality is, is that the fighters are 2% of member base. You know, the, the, the active competitors at K K KC Elite are roughly about 2% of wow. the entire member base. And everybody else is uh, has their own purpose for being there and their own reason for being there. And, and not many people want to become professional fighters or or uh, have any I any ideals on wanting to compete at all. But what we produce is great fighters. But it's only because we're not there to create fighters. The fighters are the byproduct. Our club is designed to create leaders. So 
when somebody comes to our club, what we want them to learn is to be able to teach. Well, first to be able to learn, of course, but then to be able to give back by teaching. Yeah. So number one, we create community leaders. And I couldn't even tell you, we've had somewhere in the order of 5,000 people come through the club over the last 18 years. Um, a lot of these people, police, fire, nurses, uh, lawyers, doctors, you name it. I couldn't even imagine. And, and I dare say any martial arts instructor who's been around as long as I have or longer could boast exactly the same thing. And it's so true. We create leaders first, uh, community leaders first. Then we create another byproduct is that we also create amazing teachers mm. because without those teachers, we're not going to have the next generation because – after I'm gone, who's going to take over? So <laughs> my club has spawned the growth of numerous other clubs who have mm -hmm. spawned the growth of numerous other clubs. Yeah. And my growth was determined by my teacher behind me. Yeah. So creating teachers and leaders is our number one priority. Fighters are just the byproduct. Yeah. So that's just the pointy end of, of everything, which, uh, you know, it does give you quite a lot of satisfaction on a uh, – on, on, a, on, on an interval basis, but the daily satisfaction that I get is seeing a very timid kid become a confident young man or woman, seeing uh, somebody who, who, who doesn't think that they have much of a purpose become one of the very best, most valuable instructors that we have. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've got so many of them. Uh, one of them, Roger, he first came to me because his son wanted to learn and he was just on the sidelines watching and he just decided one day that he wanted to have a go and um he's not um he's he's not built like a fighter he can't kick to the head or anything else like that he's he's now become one of the most fierce pe pe people in the club and and one of the most enduring uh uh one of the one of the most enduring combatants i suppose you could call him uh that i've ever seen but apart from that he's now one of the greatest teachers that I could say that I'm so proud to say that he's come under me. Uh, and it's his young students now, because he teaches from three years to eight years. And in that age group, he's got three different classes and he's produced kids that have come out of these and have now won far more titles than any child of that age group that I've produced. Mm -hmm. And that's under my own roof. And he's done that. Amazing. If, if I was to ask him, What's the one thing he's taken from you as a leader, as his leader? What do you think he would say? <laughs> what would Roger say? <laughs> I don't know, Roger, what would you say? Um, I think that he would say resilience. I don't agree. Yeah. yeah. And uh, re resilience and adaptability. I suppose, and being able to, because what Rog does, very similar to me, is able to read a room. He, he'll have a lesson plan in mind before he goes in and he'll be able to assess it when he gets there, be able to change it on a whim and be able to adapt the class to what is needed for the people that are in front of him yeah. rather than what it was that he wanted to put out there. Well, that's the problem with the education system, isn't it? We have these big, big curriculums and we have to teach the kids what the curriculum says, but we don't allow these t amazing teachers and people who work in schools to go and embrace the room, look at the characters, the personalities and, and teach it in the way that best fits the need for those individuals in that space, you know, and, and you've just nailed it. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, what would be the one thing that you could ask? Uh, sorry, that what's the one, if I was to ask your, no, no, I'm asking you, what's the one thing you took from your leader? Same question for Roger, but for you this time. From Kancho, Sifu. Uh, oh, so much. So much. One top one. But, the, top one would, the top one would be um, acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. Acceptance. Yeah. Uh, that everybody has their own purpose, their own goals, their own mind, uh, their own journey. Mm-hmm. And rather than wanting what you want for somebody, um, allowing them to do what it is that they want to do, which is right for them, and letting them thrive in their own setting uh, without restriction. 
Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that would be his greatest quality is that he's able to do that. I'm still learning how to do that. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, for him, that, that's, that, that'd be it for sure. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Well, coming towards the end then, um, if we've missed anything from our conversation that you would like, uh, wanted to share and it's still in your head, what, what would be that if we've missed anything from your journey? Um, I think, I think it, it would be hope. I think that no matter circumstance does not dictate the outcome and ex life experience does not make you who you are. Your identity should be defined as what it is that you want it to be and what it is that you believe that it should be. And that uh, your experiences are, are your experiences and they don't belong on anybody else's shoulders. They can be shared, but they don't belong to be put with anybody else. Mm. Uh, but hope that no matter what you've been through, no matter how tough things have gotten, there is always something for you. There is always hope. <sighs> Love it. I'm, I'm not being rude. I'm writing these down because I create guest gems from each of the episodes and uh, you've just given quite a few there. So I'm, I'm going to have to refer back to that to create those when we do uh, release this episode. Matt. Um, Thank you. Coming towards the end then again, uh, I always kind of end it and you've already answered it. I find that most of my guests do give the answer during the episode. So I'm going to have to probably switch things up, I think, going forward. But two last things. Um what's the future then we t we briefly touched it before the future for you and the and the dojo and the uh, and the martial arts w what's the future for you guys uh well that's kind of pretty easy because uh growth uh growth is absolutely everything uh mm -hmm. if you're not growing you're dying mm -hmm. um we are at the cusp of being we've been a small school we've been a medium school we've been a you know, a, a large school. Um, now it's time to uh, it's time to replicate the model, I suppose. Um, replicate it the right way with the right people, and expand. Uh, world domination is something that I've been toying around with for quite some time. I know Senpai Roger is listening right now, saying, "Well, he's got the minions to do it." <laughs> He's, he's, he's got the small army to, to, to take on the world. Um, I've been very, very fortunate to be able to, um, to be able to connect with some of the very best instructors on the planet. And I've also been extremely fortunate to be able to connect with some of the most passionate martial artists here in Australia. Um, and I'm now starting to attract, or have done for a while now, attract some people from other systems who love what it is that we do and love what it is that we stand for. And they, they see in me what I see in them. And that is, um, a, a passion for the martial arts, a passion for life mm -hmm. and a passion for people. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I'm most excited about is, is finding more of those guys. Um, they are one in a million. So, you know, as the old saying goes, when you're mining for gold, you're, you're mining for gold, not de de digging for dirt, but you've got to move a lot of dirt to find the gold. Yeah. Um, not that I'm saying that people have dirt or anything else like that, but the really good-hearted people who are in it for the right reason are, are very, very rare in in any endeavour. And it's just a matter of having the ability to be able to see and to be able to find the way that my teacher has been able to find so, so many. Mm -hmm. uh, find more, connect with them and grow together and let them be who they are mm. and just grow. Yeah. Beautiful. Two final ones. Um, you might, you, you did answer it kind of prior to that last one uh, regarding, um, it, I always ask what, 
if you're going to give any piece of advice, and I want this based on your son, uh, your, the experiences that you've endured as, as such a young person and, and to connect to where you are now. But if you could, if you could give a, if somebody's gone through something very similar to you, because I found that I felt lonely when I went through my shit, right? And, I, and maybe yeah. you did too. I'm guessing you, you felt like the only person that's ever been through anything like this. But the, there will be more people. And one thing I learned that there's, there's a lot of us out there that go through very similar things. It's just that we deal with it in our own way. And it, obviously we have our own little things that are personal to us that we, we got experienced. But someone who's been through something fairly similar to you, if you could give them a piece of advice and they've not had that touch on the shoulder from themselves or, some, or from another role model in their life where they've just got that given that hope, what would that piece of advice be for those people? I think that would be the, the advice that I gave myself is um, you will get through this. There is nothing that the human spirit cannot endure mm. and overcome. There, there, there isn't anything. I think I've proven that, and history oh. has proven that. That you know, my experiences are, are one thing, but when you look at human history as a whole, mm-hmm. people have been through so much stuff, and 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 they have achieved so many good things. There, again, it's all about hope. There is hope, and there is an opportunity to see what it is that you need to see. And I have a saying that I live by: is, is that you can either choose to see a tragedy or an opportunity. And if you choose tragedy, then you're going to invite more more of the same. But if you choose opportunity, the world opens. Yeah, that's that's beautiful, Matt. So, okay, final one, I promise. Um, I always end with a, a simple line of asking the guest, what do you think your purpose is? What is your purpose? Uh, my purpose... I think my purpose is to is to prove that anything is possible, that no matter what you've been through, no matter what your circumstances are, that you can achieve anything you want. I I, I honestly believe that. Yeah. That, that's a beautiful way to end the episode. I, I think the title that you mentioned at the beginning, that, that subject of against all odds, I think that sums this up perfectly i said um, i said uh before at the beginning that you're one of the hardest men i've ever met and i didn't necessarily mean in the physical sense but in terms of mental toughness and what you'd been through the, the even parts of the story that i knew prior to this interview obviously i didn't know the depth of it but i knew kind of what you'd been through and i, I just felt even that was one of the what made you one of the hardest men i'd ever been uh, through and i knew about your body and what your body's endured as well in a physical sense um so when i spoke about that i didn't necessarily mean in a fighting sense but i also now know you are also one of the softest people i've met <laughs> and and i mean that in the most you know from a good place because no, I, no that's that, that, that's fine and, and that's um that's um that's something that uh, more of me that I want uh, to be known, I suppose, because that's all my daughter knows. That's all my wife knows. Well, I see it all mm. now, and I think anyone mm. that's listening to this, Matt, will will understand why you're one of the toughest people because you had no choice and you had to get through if you wanted to be where you're at now and how you lead your own way. But you're also one of those, you, you're just one of the softest guys I've ever met. You, you bring authenticity, you bring gentleness, you bring heart, soul, everything to it. And um, I love what you, you, sim- you symbolize so much. You symbolize what to be a good parent. And, 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 and yeah, I don't even know how to finish it, if I'm honest, because there's just so many layers to how I could, what I could talk about. But I admire you for what you've done. And I appreciate you joining me on my journey to share your journey. Um, it's one of the most, oh, I just, I couldn't imagine it. And when I think about my trauma, it's like, fuck, you know, doesn't even come close and then one of my other guests said but andy there's no ranking on trauma and they're absolutely right there isn't but shit man when i listen to your story it's powerful and um your little girl's got the best dad um if i can be half the dad you are man i'll be i'll be happy i really thank you i appreciate that no Um, honestly um, and I think anyone listening can take so much from them, from you and take some personal development strategies, but just take some perspective even uh, and put it into their own, into their own journey. Um, I had all this spiel, what I was going to say, <laughs> and it's gone out of my mind because you've just said articulated things absolutely beautifully at the end there. And um, I'm going to have to write a lot of quotes down 
from here to share when when I do publish this. But Matt, no thank worries. you so much. And it, 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 you know what? We couldn't cut that sh episode any shorter. I feel like we probably could go through more, but we couldn't cut that episode any shorter, could we really? Because it's such no, a big, no. deep story. Um, people no, won't get the full lesson for it. I mean, some, thing, some stories need to be told, and my wife has been saying this for a long time, is that, you know, when I, I need to put out there, and, and it's time now. Time. I mean, I've 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 suffered in silence for long enough, and I've uh, uh, I didn't go through all of this for no reason, and I didn't. Uh, mm. It's it's not something that needs to be a secret, and and it's not a negative. It's positive, and we go through things for a reason, and and life dishes things out to to us at times, mm. but it's up to us to make the most of anything that we've got, and. I could meet people that have been through way, way more than I have who are on paths to success that I could only hope for and, or who have uh, mental and emotional control that far exceeds me because I've still got a long way to go, a really long way. We all but, do, right? But I'm on my way, which I'm really happy about, and this is part of it. So today I've gotten more out of this, I believe, than you have. So I want to thank you for the opportunity oh. to be able to sit and listen. And, you know, some of it is downright ugly, and, and, but you've managed to stoically um, help me through, through, through this. So, mate, I, I, I really appreciate that. Thank oh, you. Matt, no, that's very kind. I, and, and, but that, you know what, Matt, that's why this podcast exists. To, to share these stories and and to show people that there there is hope going back to your word there is hope there is escape there is ways that the human spirit as you said can get through diversity and adversity and and triumph in some shape or form and i'm so glad you you, you came to me through jake and uh, i'm so glad we could get you out there and more importantly i hope this has been uh, you've said it but i'm glad it's been therapeutic for you and um i hope this is a new step in a different direction well the same direction but on a on a bigger level for you so uh yeah. um i hope we stay in touch and um i hope we can connect and maybe meet one day if we ever catch up with jake maybe that'll be a good uh good way to to say hi absolutely <laughs> have you I'm ever come back up, have you ever come <laughs> back up to geelong maybe as well you're welcome to come by for sure no worries at all i appreciate that mate no, anytime. Um, Matt, so thank you again. And um, to everybody else out there, please come back for the uh, next episode next week and uh, we'll speak to you all very soon. So from Matt and I, take care. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.